Hi, welcome back to Michelle's Life. My name is Michelle and today's video is my December wrap up. Let's review what my TBR said I was going to read for the month. Alright, so obviously I didn't do too good with my TBR because I only read the first out of all seven of the Harry Potter books. So, but I do plan to read, if you've seen my Harry Potter wrap up, I do plan to read one book a month for the next several months so I can finish the series. I have a review, even though you don't need a review of Harry Potter, but I have a review up if you want to see it, I'll put the link down below. Obviously I gave this book five stars. And yes, shamefully this was my first time physically reading the book. The next book I read that I also have a review for down below if you want to check out is The Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley which is an, a historical retelling that was phenomenal. The premise of the book is that it takes place in 1959 in Virginia in a fictional town of Virginia where 10 African American children are to be integrated into what was once an all-white school and their struggle with that process and I felt like I was going to throw up while reading several aspects of this book. It was very powerful and very moving to see what it was like through the main character's eyes. And there are also LGBTQ elements in this book and I thought that was really interesting because it made the situation that much harder for the main character. So an amazing 5 out of 5 out of 5 out of 5 star read. Just go pick it up. It was definitely one of my top books of the year. It's also one of my top 15 books video if you want to check that out. It was just amazing. Definitely pick it up. And the next book I read is Trial by Fire. I've had it on my Kindle for a while. And I, I just didn't know what else to read this month. I kind of felt a little lost after reading Harry Potter and the Lies We Tell Ourselves because they were both amazing. So I picked this book up and in the beginning it was a little apprehensive. I wasn't really getting caught by it. But then it picked up and I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very unique read, unlike anything I've read before. It does deal with alternate realities, like Claudia Gray's book. Other than Claudia Gray in this one, I've never read a book about alternate realities. And I thought this one was done really well. Um, the thing that got me through it was that remembering that it was supposed to be about witches and alternate reality. And once I think I was like 70 pages in, it definitely picked up and got way more interesting. The magic element of this book is really unique and, again, interesting. And I think it's kind of good to go in not knowing much more. One element that I thought was really interesting too that you should know, I guess, is that the bad guy in this book is herself from the alternate reality. So that was really cool. Anyway, Trial by Fire was definitely a four star read. The next book I picked up was the first, I don't know what it's called, it wasn't a volume, but just the first single edition of the comic series Bitch Planet. <laughs> I picked up because it was 99 cents on Kindle one day, so I gave that one four stars. The premise of this comic strip is, is that any woman that d doesn't fit into the mold that society has set for women, so it is a feminist graphic novel, they are shipped off to this planet that civilians call Bitch Planet, even though it's not really called that. I don't remember what it was really called. And uh, you just get to see one woman's struggle being shipped over there in the first volume and it was really good. I liked it. The next book I read, I signed up for NetGalley and I picked this book from NetGalley. I do have a review for it if you want to see. I'll leave that link as well down below. So many links, so little time. It is called Fairy Tales for Modern Queers by Emily Reed. And this book was a whole bunch of short stories that were fairy tale retellings. I think they were almost 10. I could be wrong. I don't really remember. And I only really liked about four of them. So I gave this book overall a three star because I, I felt like the author had potential and if she would have just limited herself to like three or four stories and made them longer and built up the world a little bit more instead of just telling a quick story that was metaphoric for coming out or staying in the closet or something like that and then just tacking on the theme at the end it would have been a more interesting read but um the next book i picked up was an audiobook from my library and that was fangirl by rainbow Rao. i really want to carry on for christmas so i really wanted to read fangirl first 
and it was so well done. The voice actor and actress did an amazing job and I definitely recommend if you had a hard time reading it but you liked the premise of the story, pick up the audiobook. It was really good. I'm not gonna say too much about it because it seems like a lot of people have read Fangirl, so it's about a girl who goes to college and writes fan fiction, and fan fiction is her life. Um, another book that I picked up on audiobook and I finished it in two days was Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda by Becky Albertalli, and I, I don't know if this book was too hyped for me or what, it was a good book, I just don't think that it deserves the hype. It was just pretty much a YA contemporary book that's just like your average but from a gay protagonist's point of view, which I think, don't get me wrong, I think it's amazing that that is becoming, you know, that that is coming into our stream of choices to read. I think that definitely that is a voice that needs to be spoken aloud in our community, definitely. But I don't think that it was better per se than any other contemporary that I've read, you know? So I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get lashed for that, but um, it was good. I gave it three stars. I guess it deserves three and a half because I definitely liked it better than Modern Fairy Tales. Tell me what you think. I, I, I don't know, I just didn't think that it was that great of a story. Oh, I posted a Goodreads review for it that I think is actually pretty good and voices what I'm trying to say now that I obviously can't, so I'll leave that link down below as well. And the last book that I read this month was Sex Criminals Volume 1 by... Matt Fraction and Chip Zarsky, and uh, I don't know what I was thinking going to this one because I remember telling my friend Jody about it, and she's like, "What? What are you reading?" And I was like, "I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Everyone raves about it. Everyone says it's great." But for some reason, I didn't think it was gonna be as graphic as it actually was. So I was very disturbed by a lot of it. I did like how the main protagonist and storyteller like posts herself in some of the strips talking directly to you instead of just, like I think in Saga, the most of the story is told from the daughter in the future, you know, and she's feeding you information and telling you from the future. But I like that this was her telling us from the future, but with her actual picture there, I thought that was cute. But uh, it was just a little too intense for me, so I gave it a three stars as well. I just wasn't expecting it being so graphic, so I don't know why. That's my own fault, not really the comic. It was interesting if you wanted to pick up a story about two people who are sex obsessed because when they orgasm they can stop time i guess i don't know i do have the second one so i will be reading it since i own it i just don't know when and i'll let you guys know but that's sex criminals that's it for my December wrap up. There's only a couple more days and I just plan on reading my arc that was given to me and it's taken me a while to get through it. So it'll probably be a January read. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.